Welcome to our first episode of EXP Commercial Advisor Spotlight. Today, we're going to highlight one of our top commercial advisors. We're going to ask them a few questions of how they got started in the business, a little bit about their journey, and some stuff that can help you in your adventure in EXP Commercial. So I'm going to introduce everybody here. We have Lindy McNeese, who is the Commercial Growth Manager. My name is Sean Murphy. I am the Senior Vice President of Commercial Growth, and we have our very special guest, Melissa Jackson, and she's going to tell us a little bit about herself and Lindy. Absolutely, Melissa. We are so lucky to have you here with us at EXP Commercial and so excited to get to do this spotlight with you. Why don't you tell a little bit about your background and really what led you to here to EXP Commercial? Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me on here. It's been such an honor since joining EXP. Um, can't believe it's only been February because it feels like it's been much longer. Um, just getting settled in with the family and everything here. So um, my name is Melissa Jackson. I'm the, the retail chairperson nationally, at the retail chair committee. And I've been doing commercial real estate for 12 years, um, primarily focusing on retail. But what really got me into this industry is prior to that, I used to be a manager of restaurants. And I could go into an operation that wasn't doing very well, was struggling, was really having challenges with morale, having challenges with profitability. And I would go in there as the general manager and I'd fix the morale, fix it so it's passing all its inspections very, very quickly. Um, and then they'd bounce me to the next location. And then I finally found the one location that I couldn't fix and that store closed down because the location was really challenged. And that's what led my journey into getting into commercial real estate is understanding the operations and the retail side of things as an operator and also the importance of having a good location. My journey to EXP has been very similar on that standpoint, which is always finding a why to what you do. During this whole process, EXP has been a very big model and something that I was looking at for quite some time because of the education, the resources, the ability to collaborate that it provides, and the quality that it provides for people to be able to learn and jump into the industry, even if they're not born into it or trying to find a way to get their foot in the door. I've always liked the different model and different approach of changing operations and how business is done at EXP models. I know you're one of the top uh, retail advisors uh, and, and I went to visit you recently up in Idaho, but you're not confined to Idaho anymore, are you? No, <laughs> not by any means. Yeah, it's um, right now as a standard team has um, presence in about 16 states. And then running the National Retail Committee, there's a lot of insights and a lot of collaborations throughout that as well. Um, I spoke to somebody in Texas that wants to collaborate on quite a few different deals, California, all the way to New York um, on the commercial side. Um, and it's pretty amazing on all the doors that can open up, especially as you're getting into it and you're learning, you know, the new ropes and all of that stuff. So you're not confined to one state. Nice. Melissa, I, you know, we've had several conversations and I want you to talk to, to our audience here about the scrupulous amount of notes that you take just on a daily basis that has made you this professional that you are. The amount of knowledge and information that you have is, it's uncanny. So tell, tell everybody here just a little bit about that and why you ever started that in the first place. Yeah, so I got into commercial real estate when I was 22 years old, I want to say. Um, I was working up to four jobs and going to college at the same time. Um, prior to that, I was self-educated, so I didn't really go to public school or anything like that. I got two business degrees. I come from very, very humble beginnings. But one thing I've always been very passionate about is transitioning and making things better for the people than it was before you were there. So when I first got into this industry, I already had the business knowledge. I already was in leadership positions since I was 15. I was already you know, involved in restaurants and all of that stuff. But what I learned is this one thing that you don't know what you don't know. And once you know what you know, you cannot unknow it. So when I first got into commercial real estate, I also realized the fact that it is extremely challenging to get into this industry. If you're not born into it, or you don't come from a very wealthy family, it is very difficult to get four jobs in college while getting my second business degree. And there was no real education towards it. 
So what I set out to do, and another big reason why I joined DXP is I was like, okay, I want to change the way that this is done. I want to provide access, education, and knowledge. And the way to do that is to record the journey to go out there and create the success myself, but record the journey so I can go back and teach people. I come from very humble beginnings, and I want to make it so there's equal access, whether people are you know, getting blocked because they're in residential real estate and no one's teaching them commercial, or maybe they're getting blocked because they don't come from a wealthy family, or maybe they're getting blocked because of the lack of education that exists overall in this industry. So for 11 years, what I did, and I still do this today, is I kept notes like every single day via email of everything that I went through that day, everything, every transaction that I was working on and everything as if it was like a diary entry. And the reason why I did that is so I could go back and remember what it was like in 2013, 2014 in this industry and go back and teach it to people. Because the biggest gap that blocks success and, and failure is the lack of knowledge. The lack of insight is a lack of being able to connect with one another. It's where, unfortunately, this industry can be, and I had some good mentors, but it can be an approach on a lot of other sides of here's a phone book, have fun with it. There's no teaching, there's no knowledge, there's a scarcity mindset often when it comes to teaching other people how you do what you do. Now, I, I've I've known other people that have kept you know copious notes like yourself, mm -hmm. but that would lead me to believe that you do a little bit more than just commercial real estate. You probably do some coaching, mm -hmm. something along that lines. What are some of the other things that you're into? So I've been doing consulting work and continuing to do that since um, for like over the past 12 years. So I do international business consulting. I've had clients all the way into Portugal, across the U.S. I do international public speaking and motivational speaking as well. I'm a best-selling author. I've got multiple courses that I've put together on every level, whether it's commercial real estate related and teaching people how to, how to do the industry, um, pe teaching people how to get into it, teaching tenants. I'm doing a keynote um, this weekend to teach um, fitness concepts on how to read their leases and understand how to negotiate LOIs a little bit and understand what an HVAC is, um, all the way into going and doing stages with John Maxwell to Les Brown to Jesse Itzler, Elena Cardone, and everybody else in between. So I've been doing that for about over a decade as well. I just really believe it's important to be passionate about why you do what you do and then give back to the community what you know so that you can grow what they can as well. I'm telling you all, we are so lucky to have her here with us at EXP Commercial. This you are just such a wealth of knowledge and and just so exciting to get to talk to. I learn something from you every single time that we have a conversation. And, you know, it's just you're so good with everything that you do. You know, my, one of my questions that I have for you, knowing that it's no secret that this originally started out as a very male dominated industry. Mm -hmm. You know, and th we see that there are women who are pushing through that. You know, I was at the SIO SIOR conference a couple of weeks ago, and they said that 23% increase in women just in 2023 alone that have happened in the commercial industry. And I know that, you know, that is huge. You are one of the people here, the trailblazers that are helping make that happen. So talk to us a little bit about your, your adventure with that and what your experience has been like, you know, coming in as being a female. Yeah, it was definitely coming in as an outsider on the female aspect of things, on the financial aspect of coming from humble beginnings to just learning to learn the industry, because it definitely has a lot of people that are born into it, which dominated them. They work hard, too. Um, I've had a great experience with a lot of fantastic mentors and people that have collaborated with me as a female. I've also had challenging situations where I've had people during interviews of me tell me, hey, you're young and you're a female, you should probably just sell houses. I had that from a brokerage that was trying to recruit me um, after two years of being in commercial real estate with two business degrees. It's a little bit awkward. So you definitely hit the yin and the yang. I would say that um, the dynamic has been overall relatively positive and accepting. And really, I've had some great, great colleagues like overall. Um, but as a woman, if you're looking to get into this industry, I think it's also embracing your strengths. There's a huge transition that I think is also taking place. And men have the skill set as well. Sometimes it may just be a little bit different. But as a woman, what I've noticed is I have an ability sometimes to um, be diplomatic and see both sides of the situation and use that high that emotion, high emotional intelligence to work through difficulties right before a deal 
Like when a deal is about to blow up, how do we keep everybody calm? How do we keep everybody collected and bring it together? So everybody has their own strengths. I've just had some people that have pointed that out as you know a strength that they see with more and more women entering into this industry and being able to bring some more balance on both sides of the things. But it's been really empowering to see both sides um, of the coin on that. Well, I, I had the privilege of flying to your home state uh, for, I wasn't expecting for a thousand people or more that were honoring you. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about, about your awards. I even know that uh, you may have been the woman of the year, but I think from humble beginnings to completely acknowledge success, tell us a little, little bit about that. Yeah, it's been a very overwhelming experience to say the least because I'm actually a very introverted person even though I don't act like one but um, I mean I've got multiple behind me for a lot of real estate awards um, whether that's power broker award co-star award or any of that stuff um, in March I was spotlighted in Times Square in New York City for a business model that I built to help people get out of poverty that actually was inspired by undercover billionaire by Glenn um, as well but I created an entire business model where people can build a six-figure business without having any really any financial investment into it so I want to help people get out of poverty on that standpoint but I've been spotlighted in Times Square in New York I've been a best-selling author I got woman of the year honoree in 2022 um, and multiple other ones and then this one I was really grateful that you came down for it was very humbling um, it was accomplished under 40 which is um, one of the most accomplished entrepreneurs under the age of 40 throughout the state and it was honestly something I was a bit shocked that I got and very very humbled for and grateful for for everybody that helped make that happen. I would have to say extremely deserving. So, you know, congratulations again. It's so, so impressive. Okay. So when you first came on in February, which again, I can't believe it was just February, right? Um, you had mentioned wanting to build and grow a team. Mm -hmm. I know that you are in the process right now of making this happen. Tell us where you see your next three years while here at eXp Commercial and what that team is going to turn into, because I have a feeling that you're going to take take uh, uh, the, the national, you know, everything by storm, right? You are on a mission. You're always a woman on a mission, which is so impressed to see. So I'd love to hear what your plan is for, you know, the next three years. Oh, it's, I, it's going to be insane. It's going to be a while in such a good way. So, so far where we're at right now is we have presence in 16 states. We've got everything lined up operationally, support staff arrangements with affiliations as well when it comes to VA work and all of those types of things. Um, we've got multiple LOIs, trading paper, multiple deals working on going under contract. Um, all of the databases pulled. I'm a very systematic person of every company that's filing bankruptcy, working on cold calling scripts, role playing together regularly, meeting weekly with the team it's one-on-one -on -one to go through each individual transaction to make sure that we're all on the same page while continuing to build those offices and get physical locations for the ones that make sense that are registered on Google Verified and all of those things. So my goal with this is to take all of the amazing, amazing knowledge that I've learned over the years by working primarily with the, with the firms focused on retail and put together a retail commercial real estate focused team. That's what we're going to do and do it nationally. That way, let's say hypothetically, a Starbucks calls me up and they're like, okay, we want someone to represent them. We can operate as a master broker where everybody is dialed in on the CRM, on the systems and the tour plans, on the market plan, on how you put together all of that stuff. So dialed in that it's processed across the board so that it can be a master broker operation and everybody's getting this, giving the same service across every state line. When it comes to the cold calling or the prospecting, same things. When it comes to the processes of filling listings, like during COVID, I built a database of every local and national retailer broken up by industry and subcategory. I want to build something similar to that, elevated it. I have already elevated it and built something similar to that. And now work on doing that for every single state that we're in. So anytime we take on a listing, for instance, if they ever need a hardware store filled in there, we have the database and we have campaigns to go and fill that vacancy for any type of use vacancy that needs to be in there. So the process is rolling out very seamlessly, um, especially with how things can be in commercial real estate a little bit more slow. It's sometimes it's like, okay, we got to bump the brakes a little bit. I'm like, I'm like, I know you guys want to join the team. We just got to take a breather for a second. So it's been going very good on that. I mean, mapping systems all the way to graphics, to flyers, to everything in between. It's been a really, really great experience. Well, you're a trailblazer and you're helping EXP Commercial be a trailblazer. 
uh, with your massive expansion plans, how does EXP help you uh, not only envision, but how does EXP help you execute on your expansion plans? I think a lot of it is one, the access of not being in a box. So sometimes in this industry, you can be in a box, right? Like there, it's a lot of restriction and stuff like that. I like the open-mindedness, the technology integration. Right? Overall, when you look at commercial real estate, that's one thing that we're certainly not known for is technology integration. So the technology integration is huge. The collaboration that we have state by state, nationally, you and Lindy, it's fantastic because it's refreshing energy. Um, and it's refreshing to come to somebody and say, hey, these are my dreams. I want to go nationally. And they don't sit there and look at you like you're crazy because I'm going to do it one way or another, whether people look at me like I'm crazy or not, but it's amazing to have that support system. Another amazing thing I say is this, the culture. So in all my years in commercial real estate, I've had one person and they were great um, that would role play cold calls with me. You know how many people with the XP commercial are excited to role play cold calls with me when I say it? A lot of them here, someone in Texas, I spoke to them. I was like, and I role play with my team members and cold calls and stuff. And they're like, you role play? Oh my gosh, that sounds like so much fun. Like this, the environment, when you find the right people that are thinking outside the box is huge on that standpoint. And it's also really cool because I know a lot of people that have just gotten into this industry that want to learn this industry. And that's what I want to give back. That's one of the biggest reasons why I'm in this industry because I don't want anybody to have to work four jobs and go to college and be given a phone book because that's a disservice to the client. And that's a disservice to the person. And it's also not giving them equal access to make the biggest impact that they could in this industry or in their business or in their life. So it's a wealth of opportunity that I think is extremely untapped by a lot of people that might be outside of the company. You know, Sean, I feel like we could sit here and just talk to Melissa forever. I'm telling you, Melissa, I learned something every single time I talk to you and, and just appreciate everything that you're doing for us and that you're bringing here, you know, to our EXP family, because I would have said zero people want to uh, role play because role playing is not, you know, something that a lot of people want to do, but it is really refreshing to hear that you've completely turned that around, right? And in the way that you do it and the way that you make it successful for other advisors of ours, it's, it's really refreshing to hear that um, and that people actually want to role play to get better. Right. I was like, yes, people want to role play. We I mean, know my teammates do, but this person wasn't even on my team. He's like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> so I think it's, great. it's the culture opportunity here is huge. Well, yeah, I can't sure. tell you how proud we are of you and uh, the, the achievements that you've accomplished in the past, but even present achievements. And as a, the as the committee chair for retail and as one of our trailblazers, we're, we're definitely going to uh, have to run fast to keep up with you for sure. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And Melissa, again, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for being our advisor spotlight for the week. We are, you know, if anybody doesn't know who Melissa is, please go find her on LinkedIn. Uh, it, she is a wealth of knowledge and is always, as you've noticed, very willing to help, uh, you know, anybody with any questions or things that they might have. Thank you very much, Melissa. Thank you for being our first commercial advisor spotlight. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it.